In this video is going to be discussing setting up sheet cam on a separate computer or laptop other than the machine's computer. So it's key that we get all the parameters set up correctly so sheet cam will put out the correct G code. So the first thing you need to do is have the latest development version of sheet cam. This will be on the discs that come with your table. Um, or you can also get it online from SheetCam.com. You can go to their downloads page and download the latest stable version. That's important. It needs to be the stable version, not the development. So once you've done that and you click on your install, you're going to uh, come up to um, your welcome SheetCam setup wizard. So you're going to click next. Generally, I like to leave these just the way they are. I work in inches. You're going to keep rotary and jet cutting selected. You may need to select jet cutting. Um, and then click next. And you're going to set your output files to inches. Um, generally, output folder, I just remember the last one. And then your post processor. This is very important. We have to have the right post processor selected. So by default, you won't have the right post processor in um, this list down here. So you'll have to import the correct post. Now that post processor will be on the disks provided with your machine. Or if you have questions and you can't find it, just contact us and we'll provide you with the correct post. Now post processors change from time to time. We're always updating things. So it's never a bad idea to check with us if you got your table a while ago. Um, but generally, once you start using a post, you stick with it. So in this case, I'm going to go to import post. And I'm going to go to my, I have it on a flash drive currently. And right here. So this is the current post we're using not necessarily going to be the post that you will be using for your system but at this point in time this is one we're using so it says it installed the post correctly and it pulls it up here now you may ha need to check this go down and select the correct one from the list in order for it to pop up in this box but once you have it here you have it set and you click next and it asks you to finish now, at this point, we are not done. So the first thing we need to do up here is go to View. You're going to make sure that your Layer Tool is selected here. Okay, That will give you your box here that will show you your layers. Next, you go to Tools, and you select New Jet Cutting Tool. Now, on your screen, when you do this, this box will be checked here you're going to make sure you uncheck it and then click OK. So that needs to be done prior to installing the tool set. Otherwise the tool set names will be incorrect and much harder to decipher. So once you've made that change you can then import the tool set for your particular machine. Now that tool set will either be on the disks that come with your machine or you can contact us. Or if you've set up a tool set already on your table on the table, you can always take that tool set. To take that tool set from the table, you would go to go to your table, go File, and you can go Save Tool Set. And then you bring the tool set over to where you're installing SheCam, and you again can go File, Open Tool Set. And so let's see, SheCam Tool Sets. I'm using this one currently. 65, 85, 105 with S codes. Now it'll ask you to do to update operations. You just click OK. You don't have to do any of that. Now you should see your tool set that matches the one on the machine. Once you have done that, your next step is going to go into Options, and you will go under Job Options. Here you will set the size of your material. Generally, I will set this to the, ma the main size of my table. So if it's 48, a 4 by uh, 8 table, 48 by 96. Now, when you do this, you want to make sure your origin stays down here. Okay? 
Um, and next you're going to set your rapid height. You're going to make sure your rapid height is set to 1.5 inches. Now, your, uh, by default it will be much slower. This rapid height is how far, how high off the table the machine transfers in between cuts. Okay, and I find one and a half clears most tip-ups. If you wanted to, you can make it bigger. Okay, so once you're done with that, you click OK. Next, you go back up to Options, and you go down to Machine. You're going to make sure that you have these two checked. You'll go to your post processor, double check your post processor is set correctly. Inches is your output, and then you can go to your working envelope and set that to, generally I'll set it to match my machine, my uh, material size. Again, always making sure your origin stays down here. Every once in a while it will ch choose to change itself up to there. So once you've done that, click OK. So now most of the settings in your system are done at this point in time. So next we're going to open up a G code file and run through it. So you go down to import drawing and I'm looking on my flash drive. I have this part that I always work with. And you're going to set, of course, you're going to looking for DXF files. Okay. So set it right to there. And now I think I missed it. Here we go. This is the one I always use. Now, on your import, you're going to set your scaling to whatever scaling you're using. Usually it's inches. You're going to make sure this drawing position is set down here and you're going to uncheck use points for drilling and then it will remember this the next time you do this so click OK so it pulled my file up now at this point I'm going to generate a cut for it so I can go down here to operation new jet cutting operations or I can go up to here and click on the plasma cut first thing you're going to set is your offset you set it to outside offset now we're kind of setting defaults and so the next time you pull this up it will remember what you pulled up. Then you'll select your layer and your tool. Now which tool you select is not that important. We're just going to be using this to set these defaults right now. So next you're going to set reverse cut direction over here. So next time you you come in here it will remember. And you're going to set your uh, lead in I usually set it to arc and I set my length. Oops, not negative. 0.15. And I'll usually leave my lead outs blank. Okay? So now with that set, last, and this is important, you go up to cut path and you're going to check keep parts together. Okay? So this will cut your interior cuts first and then move on to an exterior cut and this allows you to cut one part at a time it's far superior than trying to do all your interior cuts and then come back and do your exterior cuts the reason being is if you have a problem at any point in time in the cut you can end up with the whole sheet full of holes and no way to accurately cut the exteriors this time this way is if you cut one part at a time if there's an error you only make that error on one part so and then start position I will set down here now the last thing I will do is I'll have my start points on here I'll go under editing start points mode and I'll click down here on one of my start points then I go to corner snap distance and I will lower this as low as it will go if you, your default will be higher than that but if you basically you're looking at this is the lowest it will go okay you want to make it as small as you can make it and so the reason being is when you move a start point 
the distance between where you can move it is the snap corner snap distance and so this allows you to move very small distances you can see it's kind of bouncing along there as I move it it's snapping to different distances the smaller that distance the more precision you have in placing your uh, lead-ins so so once those settings are done and you have your tools and most importantly your proper um, uh, post-processor set your systems fully set up and ready to output code that you can then bring straight to uh, Mach 3 on the machine and cut out so I hope this video was helpful and as always if you have any questions about your machine or the operation of your machine do not hesitate to give us a call thank you